everybody. I'm Kate Conroy. And I'm Vinny Savitello. And this is Other People's Business, which is the podcast from the New Jersey Business and Industry Association, the largest statewide business association in the entire United States of America. We release a new episode every every other Wednesday, so be on the lookout for that. Shout out to New Jersey Manufacturers Insurance Group. They are the uh, official sponsor of the show, and they do home, auto, and workers' comp. So check them out if you need some updated coverage. Awesome. Just a housekeeping matter, too, before we get this train rolling. This podcast is available just about anywhere you can get a podcast. That's iTunes, Google Play, Amazon's TuneIn. We even throw these things up on YouTube if you'd rather watch than listen. But no matter how you check the show out, give it some love. Give it that like. Give it that comment. Give it that five-star review on iTunes. It helps all of the respective algorithms that are going to kill us all one day. Put this show in front of more eyes, which is never a bad thing. So with all that out of the way, our awesome guest today from C3 Workplace is Donna Miller. Donna, say hi. Let the audience hear your voice. Hello, everyone. Delighted to be here. Oh, we're We're, delighted to have you. We are. We're so delighted to have you. Um, All right. So all of that out of the way, we are going to do the icebreaker for today. And the icebreaker is what are you currently binging? And I can go first because sometimes it's hard to think of uh, the answer right away. I am binging for like the fourth or fifth time Mad Men. And it is. Yeah. If anybody were to ever ask me, what is the greatest TV show ever made? I would probably say Mad Men. And I I think the reason I know that is because I can binge watch it on repeat once a year. I love it. Wow. Yeah. What is it about Mad Men that really um, makes you go, okay, I got to throw it back on. The storytelling is amazing. Storytelling. The storytelling, okay. the clothes. Oh my goodness. I mean, uh, I've talked about how I, I used to watch Friends just for the clothes. I've watched, I hate watched Maisel just for the clothes during those, middle, <laughs> during those middle seasons. Sure. Just the stink pile, you know? Yeah. yeah um, you, you know what the thing is about Mad Men too? Not only um, is the story very authentic and the clothes are very authentic, but I love the furnishings. I yeah. mean, the furnishings in the office and their oh. apartment, they yep. are just so spot on. Yep, that mid-century aesthetic. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. And Flo has a uh, part in that from Progressive. I, yeah. I don't know why that's like the one thing that I love about that show is like, we can see Flo before she was a star. <laughs> yeah, and you know who else? Uh, Kristen Shore from, um, oh my gosh, the vampire show that we love. Well, I- there's a vampire do, show that you love what we do in the shadows you love it too oh what we do in the sure 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. what's her name Kristen Shore. Kristen sure Kristen oh Shipping, um uh, uh Kristen don't oh, worry I'm, I'm cutting the blanking uh, anyway she got one of her early early roles when she was young was on Mad Men with with Flo in the um the uh, telephone office you know like yeah switchboard the, the switchboard yeah, office. switchboard that's the word right that's gonna kill me <laughs> I know. <laughs> this whole show if you see like a confused look on my face it's because i'm trying to remember what's i'm names. surprised you're not googling it right now to be honest with you no. um uh, all right anyway donna what have you been watching <laughs> i am currently and 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 my Mad Men that i watch once a year is i will re-watch the sopranos probably once a year <sighs> Love that show. Yep. But I'm, I'm currently binge watching Working Moms on Netflix. <gasps> no. I Working love mom. these train wreck. These women are train wrecks, each in their own way. And I love each and every one of them. They're so lovable. They're so good at what they do. And they're they so really bad are. at so many things. They really are. <laughs> but they, they really try. Are. They oh show my up. gosh, do they ever. They oh. show up. And they're inappropriate and they, they support they have each, each other. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. I love yeah. that show. Yeah. So I, my, um, yeah. I somehow missed the second to last season. I, I missed the, the announcement that it came out. So I just got to binge watch two seasons in a row. Oh, oh it was amazing. It was yes, amazing. It is. Very, it's, very cool. It's, it's very entertaining. Yeah. And it makes, it's validating because we're they're all... making all these mistakes and they're moving forward and they're, you know, their kids are okay and their businesses are okay. So it's, yeah. it's affirming. But life is messy. And <laughs> that show underlines the fact that you can be okay and a mess at the same time. It's exactly. okay. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I love that show. Good call. Mm-hmm. Great, great call. Vin, 
you had by the way it's Kristen Shaw it it came to me while she was talking about it and I didn't want to (laughs) interrupt Kristen Shaw that's exactly right yeah Uh, I adore her I really do (laughs) she's so she's so adorable just the way she talks is adorable yeah Um, I don't know if you ever saw um last man on earth no but she was in that too yeah she was that was probably the point where like the first thing I really saw from her and she starts that show out so annoying, but in a funny way. And, and she just owns it. It's hilarious. Really? Anyway. All right. I've been um binging Ted Lasso. I, I just started oh. that and I'm almost done with the third season. Oh. So, yeah. That's Which is a shame because I, I think that's the end of the show. So I'm almost there and then that's going to be it. They keep it talking is. about a spinoff where Roy and Nate are the are the new coaches. And I would watch the heck out of anything that Roy Kent does. I have a. Roy I Kent- feel like that's slightly spoilery because the point where I am right now, Nate is like persona non grata on the whole team there. But yeah. Oops. Sorry. I'm Sorry. sure. I'm Sorry. sure. This is such a feel good show. I'm sure that oh, it, it is with everybody it all is. friends. So yeah. Yeah. How um, could it not? Spectacular. <laughs> I, I was going to say I would watch a spinoff of Roy and Jamie like all day long. Oh, yeah. Love yeah. Jamie. Love Jamie. <laughs> Oh so my gosh. True. I think my the single greatest line in this whole show is when um what is it? Keely is trying to calm Jamie down and she's like, not everybody is out to get you. And Roy's just like, I am. <laughs> <laughs> Such a perfect like sum up of their relationship. I loved it. It's fantastic. And yeah. it's, it's so nice to like watch the those two men grow into the relationship that they have because at the beginning they hated each other. Yeah. Like hated. And by season three, they they don't just tolerate each other. They have like a weird working friendship. It's great. Mm. I love it. I'm sure if I wanted to, I could find a way to transition this to, you know, the workplace and whatever. But I'm just going to cold <laughs> be like, Donna, oh, tell us what you do oh at C3. Oh, my God. Really? Is <laughs> yeah. that how we're going to do this? Oh, that's that's really how we're going to do it. Okay. All right. I'm not so in the I... mood to come up with a, a good transition. So we're just doing it cold. <laughs> Awesome. So they don't pay me for good transitions. All right. There you go. There you go. Okay. They they'd have to pay you more for that, right? Exactly. It would be it would be a line item in my paycheck. That's 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 above your pay grade. Exactly. (laughs) Um, so um at C3 Workplace, what do I do? I help companies, we my me and my team help companies to accelerate their growth. And we do that by providing support and advisory services around business development marketing, operations, and finance. That's okay. the short version. Wow, that is a huge, that is an incredibly disparate list of things that you do. It, you know, because there are some companies that have a full complement of C-suite people to do marketing, to do finance, to do business development. And you're, you're able to do consulting work on all of those. That's amazing. How did you, how did that happen? a great question. It, it goes back a very long way. Uh, so C3 Workplace, we're, we'll be having our 30th anniversary next year. Um, Congratulations. Thank you very much. I know 30 years. And I have... Um, I myself am celebrating the 10th anniversary of my 30th anniversary, you know, so... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, congratulations to you. Too. Thank yes. you. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, so before, where it really started was before I had my own company. I worked for another facility like mine. At the core of what we did and when we started was it's a shared office facility. You've all probably heard of WeWork at this point and there are Regis and, you know, 35 years ago, obviously none of those were around. And I went to work for this little tiny private one. And um, I had come out of um, several years in the chemical industry as a young person, kind of woke up one day and went chemicals, what the heck am I doing? Went to work in advertising for a couple of years because I love advertising. Turns out I hated that job. And uh, so then I took a job as a manager of this teeny tiny shared office facility. And uh, he offered me a very paltry salary, like I could barely pay my rent. But he gave me a pretty big chunk of the profits and full transparency. And um, so I just, I took the job because I had some office skills basically. And um, I was like a fish to water. It made so much sense to me to share these assets of 
you know, doctors and lawyers were doing this forever. They would share the space, they would share the support staff, the common areas. To me, it made sense. And so what happened and the genesis of what became C3 Workplace is that I filled up the facility. I had no more offices to rent and I still wanted to make more money. So what do you do? You produce more revenue per client. And how did I do that? So I started adding on back then, I'm going to say the S word. I added on secretarial services. <laughs> oh, here, I had my hand on the beat button ready to go. <laughs> Maybe I'll beat it on, anyway. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this, was when, this was when most people wrote on a piece of paper and someone uh -huh. else typed it up. Um, so really, that was the genesis. And I started providing these additional services. Uh -huh. And that became one of the compelling differentiators of our business is not only did we, did we provide our clients a place to work and grow, then we started providing staffing on a project or per diem basis to help them in different areas. And as I opened and grew C3 and solved problems for myself around marketing, operations, biz, dev, and finance, I had an expanded service offering. So, um, you know, 30 years later, there's 20 of us and everybody has their area of expertise. And clients come to us because they can get a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And we know how to integrate it. Um, and it's become a quite a, a viable business model. So, yeah. And we keep changing. We just, every, you know, what we did 20 years ago is not what we're doing today. We just keep updating our skill set and solving current challenges. That's amazing. Oh. I, I'm, so struck by the fact, um, like, yeah, it took 30 years, but the fact that you've got these skill sets in your back pocket that you can monetize, because, you know, so many of us, I think some of us are like jack of all trades. Like, I, we all know a little bit about a lot of different things. Um, <laughs> I don't know, right? Don't you think? Just enough and, to be dangerous, right? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I always and say that about finance. I know just enough to make everyone's life miserable. <laughs> Exactly. I love that you're able to monetize not just your skill set, but your knowledge. That I think is really impressive. I appreciate that. And I have to say that what I've come to learn is um, some of my success has been unintentional. Um, I, I sort of fell into something and then I was like, oh, this is this is this this has legs. Let me go further with this. Um, and when I opened my company all those years ago, my children were ten and seven. So my number one reason for opening a business was the last guy was running that business into the ground, and he was <laughs> starting to do things that I definitely did not want to be part of. I knew I had to leave there. I knew I never wanted to work for anybody else again. Um, but my children were ten and seven, so I really wanted to make six figures back then. And have flexibility. Yeah. And that became a hallmark for my success. So I now, over the years, I had to hire people initially because A, this isn't a shoestringy kind of consulting operation. I had to hire people. So I had to live out some of the things that I now teach people to get to this place where I'm at, where I have a company that's running without me. It's running and growing without me. I have a clear exit strategy. And I've actually opened uh, I have another consulting company, uh, Donna-Miller.com is my consulting company, and I work with a handful of business owners individually to help them accelerate their growth, um, and I've made some private equity investments, so I ended up creating multiple streams of income that really run without me for the most part, and um, that to me, it was, it was, looking back, it was not a small thing that I monetized thought leadership, but at the same time, I did it in a way where it wasn't all tied to me. That's phenomenal. Um, I want you to talk a little bit about when you started bringing people on because I've heard you. So full disclosure, we work with Donna, NJBIA and Donna and uh, Paradigm. We have a, um, a business growth round table. We meet once a month and Donna has been instrumental in bringing in some amazing speakers. So if you're interested in that, you should definitely check us out on the website. Um, second Tuesday of the month. Second Tuesday of the month. Exactly. Um, 
And Donna, I have heard you in that space talk about how um, micromanaging and how there was never a problem you couldn't make worse. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, you were listening. (laughs) uh, Yes. And I, I can, I am somebody who can get deep in the weeds where I should not be. So tell me, how did you identify this as a problem and how did you fix it? Great question. Um, uh, I identified it as a problem because there was such a revolving door at my company that there was a pool in my office uh, with a hire. They would, ha- I would hire someone and there would be a pool in the office among my tenants who love me, but among my tenants as to how long would this one last? <gasps> and, my, and my personal best was she came in at nine and left at noon and never came back. And then called me six months later for her three hour paycheck, which I was like, here, here's $50 cash. Just take it and be done. Um, So, you know, and I I don't think this is uncommon with a lot of entrepreneurs. You know, I opened this business and when I opened it, I literally sat at the front desk. I did everything. I had a partner and I had an employee. There were three of us, Um, but I did everything. I I did the bookkeeping. I did the work. I did the marketing. I, I did the finances. Um, and then when I began to hire more people, um, and I started really churning through people and, and I got to tell you guys, it was years of churning through people. Um, and then I had a tenant come in who was a leadership coaching firm and we were, we had a great rapport and you know, as I think great coaches do, they never really give you solutions. They just, they ask you questions. And, yeah. and this particular gal started to ask me some good questions. And I started to go, uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, and I think that the reason all of that happened for me is because it's a combination of being a perfectionist, which I no longer am. I have fully, fully embraced good enough is good enough, but I hadn't back then. And it's um, tough. You know, it's, it's it definitely really tough, tough to make that turnover. It is. It is because, you know, it's my name on the door. It's my yeah. reputation. But um, the truth is I had to let go of it. So it became apparent to me when this revolving door just kept revolving. And then I had this wonderful person say, hey, did you ever consider the possibility that it's you, basically. It's not no, us. It's I you. Get, <laughs> I'm, yeah. I've got that Taylor Swift song in my head. It's me. Hi. Yeah, yeah, yeah no exactly. Problem. So, you know, it's the old Donna, what's the common denominator? Right? And so, yeah. It is expensive yeah. to churn through people because you have to do a search and you have to spend time interviewing and then you have to get them up to speed. So in addition to it just being annoying, the expense, my God. It is, it is so expensive. And you know, when I, when I talk to people now, I talk a lot about culture and how important culture is to retaining, attracting and retaining people. Um, so when this, when this gal said, you know, did you ever consider blah, 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 blah. Um, I started working with her and then I, I literally went through a series of consultants and I, I always have a, a coach or a consultant. I, do, I think as business owners, Um, Even when you have a team, even when you have a collaborative team environment, which I totally have now, as the business owner, you kind of lose perspective. You know, you really, you really don't have a full idea of what's going on. Um, So I brought in a lot of uh, coaches and consultants. We did 360 reviews. We did disc assessments. We did Myers-Briggs. We did Cliff Strait. We did all these things. And uh, over time, And it took time and it was painful. And and I tell you what, if you're not the kind of person who's willing to look at yourself and make changes, this will never work because it was it was not fun. It was uncomfortable. But over time, I've I really am very proud of that transformation. Um, And I know that the people who work for me now love working for me. And, you know, I've got people who are with me 20 years, 13 years, 12 years, eight years. So the churn, it's done. Whoo. That's amazing. And I I feel like if you hadn't gone through that process, which is painful, you know, it's like therapy. Therapy is not fun. It's painful. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's like therapy. 
if you hadn't gone through willingly that process, you wouldn't now have three independent income streams supporting you and able to go without you just running. That's an amazing, that's an amazing story. Like active, passive income or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Well, let me say that there are, in my opinion, there are very few forms of truly passive income. Right. Um, but recurring non-labor intensive income is very achievable. Yes. Well, speaking of that, um, what would you say your, let's call it most popular service is? Our, our easiest point of entry is bookkeeping. No bookkeeping? one wants to do their own bookkeeping. That makes sense, uh, actually. Yeah. yeah, no one wants to do their own bookkeeping. So that is a very easy point of entry. Um, I have a team of QuickBooks certified pro advisors um, and you know, they provide bookkeeping services and we pride ourselves on helping our clients not only do the books, but you know, I really believe that if you don't know your numbers, you either have to have the, that knowledge or you have to hire that knowledge because that is, I think one of the most important skills you need as a business owner is the ability to analyze those numbers, to look at history to identify future trends. Yeah. Um, I mean, for instance, for me, when COVID happened, the first thing I did was I went and back and I looked at 2007, 2008. So historically, what happened over those couple of years when the economy tanked so that I could now say, what did I do then? I could see in black and white and some red, how much that cost me. Um, and now, so, so how do you take history and project with it, which is which is what we ended up doing. So I would say bookkeeping is our easiest point of entry. We do a lot of uh, CRM setup. We are Zoho experts. Customer resource uh, management. Yes, customer relationship management. Relationship, ah, uh, right. I was close. Um, yeah, <laughs> so we, we do a fair amount of uh, CRM implementation and training around that. And, and really, a good plan for us, and this is, you know, the double-edged sword of doing a lot of different things is, it's great that you do a lot of different things, but it, it becomes a marketing challenge. Yeah. So mm. we typically market to the pain, the pain of business owners who realize they should be getting better results. They're not using their resources the way they should. They, they know there's more. Um, and so we take a very consultative approach from the, from the get-go. They come to us, they might come to us and say they need bookkeeping or, or they need an extra set of hands, but it turns out they need something else. So it's a very diagnostic process. Nice. This I want to ask, oh, go ahead, sorry. No, no, go ahead. I'm just sort of processing and thinking how fascinating it is that you're able to do this. I was going to say, I, I want to, I, I'm not sure the best way to ask this, but I, I, I'm wondering if there's something in particular, you know, I'm sure a lot of businesses, they've been doing on some level the bookkeeping since they started their business. Um, maybe they think they're doing like an okay job. And then you take a look at the books and you're like, whoa, is there something common that people just either don't think about or, or maybe like frequently mess up that you're able to swoop in and help with? Yeah, I think, uh, I think the most common thing that we help our clients with is getting a clear handle on their profitability or lack thereof. And it's not just overall P&L for the company, but it's P&L. Wait, what's P&L? Profit, profit and loss. loss. Sorry. Profit and profit loss. loss. Okay. Good question, Vin. I, yeah. You know, this is why I'm here. I'm, I'm the, yep. I'm the Good every question. man. <laughs> Good question. So we help them to get a clear picture on what their profitability is on their profit and loss statement, not only uh, overall operations, but depending upon their circumstances, we might look at project. We might look at customer, but the thing that we always tie into the process for any professional service firm, which is a big part of our client base, any type of trusted advisor, um, is time tracking. Many companies do not understand how much of an impact that has on their bottom line. You know, they, they think they're making money on something, but it turns out the amount of time they're spending on it is completely disproportionate to what they're charging. So I that's I talk, a big area. I talk about this all the time. Uh, I mean, I, we do events at BIA. And so 
you know, you can certainly see in black and white, how much does the venue cost? How many tickets are we charging? What are the sponsorships? Like you can see those numbers. The thing that you cannot see unless you really look hard are your soft costs. How much time did it take this person to do a site visit? How much, how many, how many gas, how much gas, how many miles, how much time did it take them to uh, create the marketing? How much time did it take all of the staff to do anything that they did? Very few people will factor in your soft costs, which is people into into budgets and line items and it's absolutely and they don't do it because it's hard it's really hard work well but it, it is hard but like a lot of the services that we provide to our clients part of what we're doing is bringing them along in the process and i think that's another differentiating factor for us we don't hand you this customer relationship management system or this quickbooks file and say here you go you're all set up you know, we stay involved. We help them to utilize it in a way that makes sense right. to them. Um, yeah. And and I have to say that at C3, of course, my gals track everything. And when we track time, not only are we tracking time to clients, to bill clients, or um, clients may have a flat fee, but we're still measuring time because as the manager, we have to make sure we're billing appropriately. Um, but also they track all of their C3 workplace time and their C3 workplace time gets broken into your, your pillar categories. How much time is the company spending on mar marketing? How much is spending on operations? How much is it spending on um, you know, staffing? And, and I always say to them, okay, the four of you are having a meeting. Do you know what that meeting is costing? Right. Like, <laughs> and our, you know, so we look at, and they all have KPIs, key performance indicators, they all have a quota, so to speak, of how much billable time they should have, and it's different for each position. Um, but we measure, okay, we're spending hard dollars on marketing, but we're spending a lot of time on marketing, right. and that's part of our cost. Right. So I do think that that's a piece that a lot of companies miss, and, and they say, well, I don't bill on time. I don't bill hourly. Well, you know, there is a big cost associated to that time, so financing and up-leveling people's understanding of what really is associated with the cost of what they're doing is, I think, one of our kind of ways we up-level their bookkeeping. I think that is amazing. That is the first time I have ever heard of a, of a non-law firm company approaching the business world the way that a law firm approaches it. Because when it comes right down to it, time is the most important and expensive thing that you have. And so if you're not billing by, by time, how do you arbitrarily decide what something costs? If you're if if you're in a business like you, if you're just selling widgets, whatever the widget is, the widget. But if you've got if you're selling time and skill set and thought leadership, yeah, and I, and I think it's relevant when you're serving multiple clients. I mean, if right. you have a one, you know, a very singularly focused position, your entire cost can be associated to sure. whatever that business unit is. But if your team is working on multiple things throughout the week. Right. This is fascinating. All right. I think we're going to take a quick break. And then when we come back, we're going to play a game. Yay. And welcome back, everybody. Now it is time for our lightning round, which today is brought to us by RWJ Barnabas. Donna, are you ready? I don't know. <laughs> it's not investigative journalism. It's going to no. be real easy stuff. Don't worry. We All might right. challenge you. We might challenge you on your answers, but it's never that terrible. Oh, we're going to definitely challenge you on your okay. answers. There's a lot of judgment from this game, but I do love a challenge and All I've right. been known to. Okay. All right. All right. Fire All away. Right. All right. Favorite pizza topping. I don't really eat pizza, but if That's I terrible. had to, what? I know. <laughs> That's the single I worst know. answer ever. <laughs> like, I mean, we, we've judged some people for the spinach and onions and stuff, but never anything as horrible as I don't eat pizza, but sorry, go ahead. <laughs> All right. So I don't typically eat pizza, but I love a really good slice of Sicilian pizza. Okay. Just, just, you know, with good sauce and cheese and sure. nothing, yeah. nothing fancy. No judgment. Sicilian is sort of like the ultimate deep dish. It's, it I, is. I think it's and like it's, deep dish times yeah, too. So. Yeah. There's a pizza parlor in my town here who's been around for a very long time. They don't take credit cards and they have never delivered. Wow. They just have, it's called B&J, um, ah. Route 23 in Pompton Plains, New Jersey. Um, little plug for them. Um, mm. But the, the sauce, 
and the you know when the dough is like has flavor it's yes Oh, yeah, we have a we have a cheesesteak place about five minutes down the road from me, and it's they they make gourmet cheesesteaks out of like real steak and everything. I don't know, but they don't take credit. It's it's cash only, and there's no ATM anywhere near. And it it sucks because I would totally eat there more if it was just uh, that they took a credit card. You know, I feel like going down there almost every day and being like, "Have you heard about NJBIA membership and how we can <laughs> save you money?" You should. You <laughs> yeah. should. Well, it's, yeah, it's funny, but think mm. about it. Not for nothing. Why do you yeah. think they only take cash? It has nothing yeah. to do. No, with I it. know it's the credit card yeah. processing I mean, cost. For them. Come on, no. you're, you're driving a customer out of the. You know, like I, I'd totally be there probably more often than I responsibly should if it wasn't for just that one thing and i don't know he charges 15 dollars per cheesesteak you're gonna lose 15 dollars because you're not Man. willing to spend 40 cents okay. you know like so that's Vinny, all I'm saying. As, as the financially literate business owner the reason sure. is he's claiming that much of his income he's saving a gazillion dollars in taxes yeah i was gonna uh, say that yeah it's not necessarily the, a the cash the business parties. it's a cash yeah. business yeah is that's is kind okay. of unbelievable all right, that's that, that's a little shadier than I than I wanted. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna I, have to ruminate on that for a little while. <laughs> I have a feeling there's some truth in that. I think I'm about to go in there with a totally different proposition than Have you heard of NJBI membership? <laughs> you know. Yeah, exactly. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck with that. I don't want to. Or I guess I do want to hear how it follows up. I want to hear the the end of that story. We don't support it's, blackmail in any way. No, no, <laughs> so no. I'm just I'm just putting that out there. Next question. There you go. All right. <laughs> Okay, next question. Greatest TV show ever made? I think I'm going to go with Sopranos. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'm going with Sopranos because it was such a, it was such a unique and, and, and groundbreaking show in its time. Um, I mean, I really, and I grew up very Italian and my dad was in the union and, you know, there definitely were some crooked people. Um, but it seemed pretty real to me and, um, and it seemed authentic and what I loved the most about it. And I think streaming has really ruined this for all of us was everybody watched it on Sunday night and everybody talked about it on Monday. Yeah. And if you, and if, you know, so we had to wait another week for a season and, um, yeah. So yeah. there's very few things that. like that now. It's a shame. There yeah. really are. It's a shame. Streaming has been that. And second, and maybe these are even a tie, but similarly, Saturday Night Live. I mean, I was in high school. We would all go home on Saturday night, like the bars would empty. And, you know, I'm a little older than you two. So I, my Saturday Night Live was Dan Aykroyd and, you know, John Belushi and Gilda Radner and Jane Curtin. And that was an amazing show. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, it was back then. I, I never used to be into SNL, maybe just because of how late it came on. Um, but I started watching, let's call it like the the clips they would put on YouTube a few years ago. And I, I've been really into it ever since. So uh, yeah. Yeah. They they it recently did an episode with Jenna Ortega, which yes. was probably the funniest thing I've ever oh, seen. Really? Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Check that out. Oh, yeah. It, it was, was hilarious. Amazing. Every single skit, I'm like splitting. <laughs> it was, it was she hilarious. is so funny. She yeah. is That's just great. so natural. I, I don't know. I, I don't know how it works. Is it that the actor comes on and kind of says what they want to do, or do the SNL writers kind of come up with like what they think that person would fit into? Whoever, whichever way it was, whoever it was wrote those skits brought their A game for that that episode. It was hilarious. Yeah. I, I imagine it's a it's a combination. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice, good stuff. All right. Uh, what is the most daring thing you've ever done? Borrowed a hundred thousand dollars and opened a business with a ten year old and a seven year old. There you go. <laughs> That is a really daring thing to do. Sure. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, my I gotta God. say that thousand dollars in debt, like just with these little kids and just yeah. trying to make and, it work. Oh and again, God. that was 30 years ago. So, you know, yes. hundred thousand dollars then is like a half a million now. Um, and, uh, and, yeah. and props for betting on yourself, you know, because yes. that's, that's really the scariest thing in life is saying like, you know, what? I really believe that I could do this, but in order to get there, I got to take a huge gamble, you know? That's Can I say problem. something that you'll that you'll surely bleep, or should I skip it? No, no just say whatever it. you want. <laughs> okay. So I have often said in the famous words of Eminem, "Success was my only mother option." There you go. <laughs> <laughs> 
You know what's that funny is, is that in my head I started to run off with the rest of that song. Failure's not. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I I still listen to that on a regular basis. I do have to beep it, but don't take offense into it. You know, it's it's iTunes. <laughs> <laughs> It's okay. I get it. They'll still know what I was saying. Exactly. (laughs) I'm going to leave the mother intact. Okay. There you go. (laughs) That's great. All right. Farthest from New Jersey you've ever been? Um, Egypt. Ooh. Say more. I love traveling is my passion. It's what I have crafted my life to be able to do at this point in my life. And actually I went several years ago. I went on a whim, funny story. I had a friend who was doing a training in Cairo and um, we were talking on the phone and she said she was going to Cairo for four days. I'm like, oh my gosh, you're gonna you know, stay and bookend it with some touring. She goes, well, going by myself, I'm a little nervous about it. You know, it's not exactly a female friendly country. And this was 2006, it was safe enough. Yeah. Um, and I said to her, when are you going? And she told me the dates and I looked on my calendar and I regularly simply block time off of my calendar. I am a work-life harmony girl. I do not work crazy hours. I never have. And I looked on my calendar. I'm like, lo and behold, I'm off that week. I said to her, can I come? She's like, sure. I got a room. They're paying for it. I, I go on the, on the internet. I look up my flights and literally I booked my flights hired a personal guide. We planned a trip and I went to Egypt 10 days later and I flew 18 hours, a direct flight to Cairo, spent two days in Cairo, took a plane to Luxor, spent two days in Luxor and flew another 18 hours to come home. Is Luxor also in Egypt? Luxor is in Egypt. Um, So uh, Cairo is on the... East side of the Nile and Luxor is on the West representing life and death. So all the tombs are in Luxor. That's where everyone was buried. Huh. And, and, you know, the pyramids and the Sphinx and all of that is on the East side in Cairo. Interesting. See, so I, I thought the whole idea of the pyramids was that the, let's call it like the big wigs were buried there, right? Like, nope. like King nope. Tut and all them. No. Nope. Okay. All right. Nope. They're in Luxor. Okay. They're in Luxor. Very cool. And, and, uh, and so, yeah, I adore the more you traveling. Know. Yep. I adore <laughs> traveling. That is my passion. And uh, yeah. So Egypt, probably the farthest place I've been. Cool. That's amazing. I love it. I, I don't envy you the jet lag, but that was that's a you great... know what? There really was no, you know, I didn't really have any jet lag. I never tried to change time zones, but I will tell you on the way. And I also can't sleep on planes. So I was awake for the 18 hours both ways. Um, I read, and I'm almost embarrassed to admit this, the entire first Twilight book on the way home. <laughs> there you go. I mean, if you weren't going to sleep anyway, you had to do something. I was team Edward, just saying. <laughs> I like Team Jacob. You know, he wasn't trying okay. to like kill her to to be together forever. But that's all I'm saying. I know you're right. Spoiler alert. <laughs> that's not a spoiler. That's like the whole idea of like the first four books or whatever. I don't know. He's like, Honestly, it would be so never... natural. You wouldn't have to do anything to be with me. And that's a good point, is all I'm saying. It is. Like, it is. It yeah. is a good point. Well, I didn't read them, so I don't actually. You know, I, I, I have a weird affinity for those. Um, I'm not going to say the books. I'm going to say the movies because I, okay. I didn't read the books. But um, as a as a guy, you know, who was at the time, I mean, I, I think my wife and I were recently married at the time. But I I sat in the theater and I recognized that there are worse rom-com kind of things that I could be dragged <laughs> to than pissed off werewolves fighting pissed off vampires, you know? And there were some great special effects in those yeah. movies. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Personally, You're I right. recommend Eclipse. As, as far as those kinds of movies go, it's fantastic. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. So true. Um, all right. Last question. How many cats is too many cats? Well, I currently have two and I'm going to say two. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough <laughs> yeah I, uh, I, I i do think one is the right number of most oh, any pet no we see you have one yeah, they no, get lonely no, but they have I, you 
well, that's just it. I'm not here enough. They want, yeah. they want. And that's your fault, Kate. That's. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to look into um, the automatic litter box, Donna. Oh please. my gosh. Game changer. Yeah. Before we hit record, Donna was cluing me in. I need to really investigate this because it's yes. amazing. Tell the audience about the automatic litter thing. So I, I joke that this litter box is made by uh, Nassau level, Nassau level cat loving nerds <laughs> sure. because it's super expensive. It's $550 worth every penny, but it, it you put the litter in, it's this big dome. The cat goes in, does his business. There's a time delay. The whole thing spins and it sifts the dirt, the cat dirt into a drawer. So literally I have not scooped litter in 15 years. I open the drawer, I change, I close the bag, I put a new bag in and that is the extent of it. And the reason I got the robo litter, because I did read it on Sky Mall eventually, the first time I found it was on Sky Mall because I can go away for a week and leave my cat. I can get yeah. somebody to come visit him and say hello, yeah. but I can leave my cat for an entire week. My newest version used to hold two weeks worth of <gasps> ew, but now that I have two cats, I'm back to one week and it does not smell. I mean, when you open the drawer, I gotta be honest. Sure. And then you replace it and you shut it and you're all good. When we were talking about this, Kate mentioned her automatic cat feeder. Oh, yeah. and I'm thinking I want to get one of those for my dog. If there's something in my house I can automate, I'm doing it. <laughs> I am so with you. That is so true. Yeah. Yeah. Game changer. So, I'm investigating yeah. this. Yeah. Check it out. I'm telling you, you'll love it. I absolutely. In the meantime. Oh, wait, 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 Kate. Um, the, the game is brought to us by what was it? RWJ yes. Barnabas? RWJ Many Bar thanks to RWJ Barnabas for letting us play the game. Um, but yes, yeah, so to get back to business, because that's what I guess everybody's here for. Um, <laughs> tell us about how the consulting business came about. Sure, sure. So my intention was always to uh, transition out of C3 Workplace. And my intention was that I would do some consulting when I retired, because I kind of do that now. So why not do it in the future? Uh -huh. um, and that plan got accelerated a little bit by the fact that uh, when COVID hit, um, I also decided to end my 30 year marriage because I learned, I do believe that every adversity has a lesson and a gift. And what I learned in that time is that life is shorter than I think. And I am also stronger than I think. Yeah. Um, so I got divorced and while I was waiting to get divorced, I couldn't really work. I mean, I could, but I didn't want to because as those of you who are business owners that ever gotten divorced, you also might have to buy your ex who never worked a minute in your company out of your company. So um, I, during the time that I couldn't really work, I completely built out Donna-Miller.com and I built out my consulting practice. And so um, it really complements what C3 Workplace does. So it's kind of, you know, the notch above what they're doing. It is really where I'm working with uh, business owners to help their and their team and I'm usually working with, you know, teams as opposed to just business owners, although I do both, it depends. Um, but I work with teams to help them up level what they're doing, uh, streamline. And, and because I am a generalist, I am able to help them link up all these different parts of their company. And as, as Jim Collins would say, my, my work in consulting is helping them to make sure they have the right people on the bus and the right seats and that all their systems are in place so that they too can find the exit door. Maybe they're selling, maybe they're transitioning. So um, the consulting company was kind of born out of my divorce. And, um, you know, and I built a platform for speaking. So that is a big way that I, I bring um, business in and I speak on various topics related to women's empowerment, um, you know, which is my story and business growth, which is also my story. And, you know, I'm at a point in my life where I get to work with people. I, I never, I will never again, and I haven't done it in a very long time. I work with all people that I really love working with. And I work with people who are really committed to their own personal development and growth because that's really what it takes. So, you know, I often say I feel insanely blessed and lucky to be 35 years into this. And I still really like what I do. And it's because Huge. every day has been different. And, yeah. you know, the C3, I mean, this is kind of a side note, but the C3 stands for Connect, Collaborate, Community. 
when I, I can't believe read... I didn't ask that at some point. That's usually one of the first okay. things, but go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. No, it's okay. And, and I rebranded, you know, I, I opened the company under one brand. It was called above and beyond. It sounded like a good thing. And hey, now I'll really date myself. Got me great yellow page listings. Oh yeah. I bet uh, it does. Which, which was totally how I built my initial business. Um, but then when I rebranded uh, about 10, 12 years ago, it, it became clear that our secret sauce is that we are connectors. So whether you're coming to us and you're saying, I think I need this, or I think I need that, we might be able to help you. But if we can't help you, we have enough of a pool of people that we know. We're well-regarded in Northern New Jersey. We're a go-to resource. We'll be able to refer you out to someone. So, you know, it's just been so great to build this community of like-minded and like-valued people. And it, it contributes to the culture at C3 where we really believe companies should be a force for good and that a rising tide lifts all boats. So we're, you know, we're, we have a big why and, and, and it's what drives us all forward. So the consulting is kind of how I'll finish my career. I, you know, I'll work for as long as they'll have me. <laughs> and, uh, but, I will do it from anywhere. That was the idea of the consulting. I will do it from wherever I happen to choose to travel at that given point. It's I was going to say, you know, a, a beach in Cabo or something, you know, margarita in your hand, a laptop on your uh, lap. Well, Not a terrible way to spend the, uh, the retirement <laughs> years. <laughs> I am known for, I, I go to Cabo every January. Funny oh, that's amazing. That. Uh, well, January, February. And I always do a blog and the picture is my toes in the, in the, in the sand. So blogging from the beach. Very cool. Love it. Donna, anything coming up you want to promote? Well, if you have not yet checked out the NJBIA Business Growth Roundtable, oh. it is a webinar that we do each month. It's the second Tuesday of the month. It's 12 to one o'clock. And I want to tell you that in September, I think it's September 11th. I don't have that calendar in front of me which is kind of awful, but I know um, <laughs> I was just thinking it was a, such a weird job. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I think it is, but we have, um, well, we will have Dave Matson, who is the president and CEO of Sandler training and management globally. And he helped us kick off the round table over two years ago. So we've got that coming up. Um, and you can always check out the C3 workplace.com website for events or the Donna-Miller.com for events. So yeah. It's September 12th. Ah, Thank that's you. Isn't much that better? better? Okay. So, <laughs> and you can actually register now. It's actually live on the C3 website. Um, yep. And we will be talking about the future of sales and how we incorporate AI into our process. So it's pretty exciting. And, and uh, you know, it's been a great collaboration with NJBIA to be able to deliver this round table. And it's, it's really been fun. And we've kind of, I'd say we have it down to a science, except when we don't. <laughs> I love I it. I agree. I would have to agree. Our members love it. And we love working with you guys. It's just such an easy, it's an easy yes. You know what I mean? Well, and, and Rachel and I have worked together many times before. And, you know, we- and Just this a is shout the out thing. to Rachel Zergen. Yes. This yep. is a shout out to Rachel Zergen <laughs> at Paradigm Marketing and Design. Sure. Um, we're very clear on what our skill sets are. And even though our services overlap, we do a lot of what Rachel does and, you know, but our target markets are very different and we do a great job of collaborating and sending information back and forth. So, you know, we can give the audience a multi-dimensional perspective right. as in size of company um, as we go along. So it's been a great collaboration and, and I love working with uh, When Rachel will call me and she'll say, I have an idea and here's another bleep for you, Ben. And my immediate reaction is always, oh, f what is it? <laughs> I love it. We got to push the G rating or whatever we're at right now forward. <laughs> I'm tired of being so kid friendly. Yeah, there you go. Well, that's all right. It's all right. I understand. Uh, so. Donna, um, if somebody wants to get a hold of you, maybe take advantage of some of your bookkeeping or consulting services, how can they go about that? The website is c3workplace.com. Tons of information on that website. Me personally, you can reach me at Donna at Donna-Miller.com. And I can always point you in the right direction. Awesome. Thank you so much. I think that is our show. Thank you to our listeners, especially the subscribers. We appreciate the support so much. Thank you to New Jersey Manufacturers Insurance Group, the official sponsor of the show. They do home, auto, and workers' comp, so check them out if you need some updated coverage. And finally, massive thanks to Donna Miller of C3 Workplace. Aww. 
Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. You guys are really fun. You make this so easy. (laughs) Oh, thank you. It's a fabulous conversation. Really appreciate it. Good. Well, thanks for having me. All right. We'll see you next time. Bye. (laughs) 